Hello, and welcome to this lab for Physics 132. This lab is going to focus on one of the most common things that you can do to data, fit a line to it. You've probably done some linear fitting before in other courses like statistics or chemistry lab or biology lab. In this lab, however, we want to go beyond what you have probably already been exposed to and incorporate our ideas of uncertainty and its propagation, which we have already explored into both our fitting and into interpreting the results of our fitting. Linear fits to data are extensively important in developing models. A model is a way to simplify the exceptionally complex world into a version that we humans with our tiny monkey brains can fully comprehend. They require thinking about which quantities are important and which are not, and how those quantities are related to one another. In medicine, for example, the functioning of how the heart moves through the body can be most simply captured based upon blood pressure and heart rate. We can generally safely ignore the properties of the individual cells and how the blood interacts with the bone marrow and stuff like that. On the other hand, if we want to understand a blood cancer like leukemia, the properties of the individual cells and their interaction with bone marrow are obviously of critical importance, while the functioning of the heart may actually be a little bit less important. Both of these situations are models of blood, but focus on different aspects of it. One model focuses on the system as a whole while ignoring the microscopic parts, while the other focuses on the microscopic parts and mostly ignores the macroscopic whole. Both of these models are, in a sense, wrong in that neither has the complete picture. Each, however, is useful in its own domain and, if needed, a better, more complex model could be built that incorporates both aspects of blood. As a statistician George Bach said, all models are wrong, but some are useful. In fact, your entire science education, and frankly, science as an enterprise, can be thought of as simply building better and better and better models of the world around us. So why are linear fits so important in developing models? Well, a line is arguably the simplest relationship there is, and so are comparatively easy for us humans to understand. For example, compare the ideal gas law, PV equals nRT which is linear with the van der Waals equation, this thing, which is not linear, both N and V are squared. For the linear ideal gas law, I can easily see that if the temperature doubles, the pressure will double, assuming everything else is constant. For the van der Waals equation, however, it's a little bit trickier for me to see how all the different pieces will interact. Given that the difference between these two models is less than 0.1% for oxygen at atmospheric pressure and room temperature, it's much easier to conceptualize and work with the ideal gas law, and the results are often, frankly, good enough. As another example, consider the paper, What Determines the Metabolic Cost of Human Running Across a Wide Range of Velocities, from the Journal of Experimental Biology, which we'll refer to throughout this lab. The entire goal of this 2018 paper is to develop a better model to predict the amount of energy a human will use while running. The previous model by Cram and Taylor in 1990 was a linear relationship. EMET equals C1 over TC WB. In this equation, EMET is the metabolic energy expended, WB is the weight of the person in newtons, TC is the time in contact with the ground, and C is just a constant that had to be measured from the data. This was part of the model. As can be seen in the figure A from their paper, this constant C depends upon the velocity of the runner, which a good model should be independent of how fast the runner is going. And the goal of this paper was to develop that better model, to develop a model where the constant is not dependent upon speed. Thinking about the actual attributes of the problem and doing a whole bunch of 131 style statics with the sum of the torques being set to zero and stuff like that, the authors thought that it, the muscle volume might be an important variable and therefore developed a different linear model where EMET is equal to K VM over TC, where VM is the volume of active muscle in cubic centimeters and the resulting constant K is once again measured from the data. As you can see in figure B from their paper, this K is independent of speed. The authors therefore argue that this model is better because it explains more information no, because speed is no longer a factor in their model. You notice that these plots, of course, have error bars. And so we need to be able to incorporate what we already know about uncertainty into our linear fits. That's the goal of this lab, 
Along the way, we'll think about what makes a good versus a bad graph. So on with the lab.